let's talk about mermaids for a second. Of course, they have the big tail instead of legs, that's a given, and they usually have amazing hair despite all that salt water. But how exactly do they breathe under the sea? I'm pretty sure they don't have gills or a blowhole like fish or dolphins. So seriously, what is the deal? Well, Adam Yamaguchi may have found the answer. Ever wonder what's in those big bubbles that scuba divers burble up from the deep? Some of it is carbon dioxide gas. We all convert oxygen into carbon dioxide in our lungs and breathe it out when we exhale. But there's plenty of unused oxygen in those bubbles too. Normally, after inhaling air from a scuba tank, a diver loses all that unused oxygen. This is called open circuit diving. But there's also closed circuit diving, where carbon dioxide exhaled by the diver is absorbed and any unused oxygen is circulated through a device called a rebreather, where it's recycled and mixed with new oxygen to be inhaled by the diver again, allowing them to stay underwater much longer. Rebreathers have been used by professional divers for over a century and are big and bulky. But now a group of innovators has developed a small rebreather for average divers, even beginners, allowing them to stay underwater for up to two hours. It's called the Explorer. The big difference between rebreather diving with the Explorer and traditional scuba is that you don't have those bubbles that you're exhaling that's scaring away a lot of the fish. I flew to Monterey, California to meet Nick Hollis, who showed me how his rebreather system works. So here's the Explorer. Oh, it's small. Yeah, it's compact. The entire unit, the computer, the tank, everything is in this one small package. This is the scrubber. And what does the scrubber do? So this is what filters out all the carbon dioxide. So as you're exhaling gas, this is removing all that bad carbon dioxide before the air goes back into the unit to rebreathe it. So this is really one of the keys to this whole system. Exactly. Here. What is in here? So this is nitrox, it's enriched air, and it ranges between 32 and 40% oxygen. I think one of the most remarkable things is just how small this is. What I'm used to is these giant things that you have to strap to your back. A big tank, yeah. The reason why it's so much smaller is because you're recycling the gas that you breathe. Every time you inhale on typical scuba, you're exhaling that gas. What goes with that is a lot of good gas. So on a rebreather, you only need a little bit more to make up the gas that's lost. Mm. The Explorer uses a digital life support system, or LSS, that monitors both oxygen and carbon dioxide levels, and an LED handset so divers know exactly how much time they have left underwater. If there's an underwater emergency or carbon dioxide is in the system, the diver needs to switch from closed circuit to open circuit for a safe ascent to the surface. Here's the mouthpiece. This is obviously what you breathe from, and this is very similar to traditional open circuit scuba and the way that you breathe from the unit. Now there's a lever on the front of it here, and that switches from open circuit position to closed circuit. So very simple, just a, a flip of the lever here brings you to closed circuit mode. Rebreather technology is used by firefighters, the mining industry, even astronauts in space. But with Nick's simplified design, even novice divers can now learn how to use a rebreather. One of the big facts and draws about diving is that about 90% of the ocean is still unexplored. And these tools, like the Explorer, allow us to get in there, interact with fish, and explore things we haven't seen before. And being able to breathe underwater longer and experience the wonder of this world is absolutely worth it. <laughs>